Hey guys, in today's episode, we have a lot of interesting artificial intelligence news. OpenAI develops programming teacher for GPT chat. What can we expect from GPT? Sun out drops hints about what's coming up. Would you make a trade? The goal is betting that glasses with holograms will replace cell phones. Comment below what you think about these news. Which one attracted your attention the most? Let's spin the news, but first I'll take a sip of my water. I'm not having coffee today. Comment below what you find most interesting after the sip. We'll spin the news. OpenAI develops programming teacher for chat GPT. OpenAI has developed Critic GPT, an AI tool designed to correct errors in the code generated by chat GPT itself. Over time, it became increasingly difficult to fix chat GPT. And to solve this problem, OpenAI created a tool not for the consumer, but for the code itself. To start, Comment below if you believe Critic GPT can revolutionize interaction with artificial intelligence. We want to hear your opinion. Comment there and I'll answer everyone individually. Remember guys, subscribe to the channel, hit the like because this channel is growing. I dedicate more to it and then bring more videos to you. Thank you very much. How do you help? Like share, then hit share, get the link and share it in your WhatsApp group so people come here and get to know the channel. Thank you very much to those who have already subscribed. Moving on, OpenAI has created a model called Critic GGPT, which helps find errors in the chat GPT code responses. When people use Critic GPT to review the chat GPT code, they do it 60% better than without this help. The company is beginning to use models similar to Critic GPT to assist with AI training, which is a big step towards improving the evaluation of AI responses that can be difficult without better tools. GPT-4 models, which form the basis of chat GPT, are designed to be useful and interactive through a process called reinforcement learning with human feedback. The acronym is RLHF. From this point in the video, whenever I say RLHF, I'm referring to reinforcement learning with human feedback. In essence, the artificial intelligence is continually tested and there is always human feedback indicating what's wrong, what's right, and what can be improved. In this process, AI coaches evaluate different responses from ChatGPT to enhance its performance. As ChatGPT becomes smarter, its errors become more challenging to notice. This complication makes the task of comparing and improving the model much more complex. This difficulty is an RLHF limitation as it gets increasingly difficult to align the models as they become more advanced than the people providing feedback. To solve this problem, OpenAI trained Critic GPT to highlight errors in chat GPT responses. It's one AI correcting another AI. While Critic GPT doesn't always get it right, it helps many trainers identify more problems than they would without AI. When people use Critic GPT, they become better at critiquing the AI's responses and making fewer hypothetical mistakes than when they work alone. In tests, a second coach preferred the mistakes made by the human team plus Critic GPT over 60% of the time compared to a person without assistance. Let me give you an example for easier understanding. Imagine that you're correcting a math test. Without assistance, you might find some errors but may overlook others. Now, if you have a tool that indicates potential errors, you find significantly more problems and make a more accurate correction. That's what Critic GPT does with the responses of GPT chats. It assists people in identifying more errors and improving the quality of AI responses. Including, it's impressive to see how OpenAI is at the forefront of AI development, especially with Critic GPT, which promises to revolutionize the way we train language models. While there are still challenges such as spotting scattered errors and task complexity, integrating Critic GPT into the RLHF pipeline has already demonstrated a significant increase in the accuracy and usefulness of critiques. 
This breakthrough not only helps coaches identify more errors, but also provides more valuable feedback. This raises our curiosity about how these tools will evolve and impact the future of AI. And what about you? What do you think of these innovations? How do you imagine Critic GPT can further improve? Leave your comments and let's continue this discussion. If you find the news interesting, hit the like button, share and subscribe. What to expect from GPT? Sam Altman gives clues to what's ahead. According to OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, expectations for the next language model for AI GPT-5 are high. He promised the new version will be a significant step up from what we have today. I hope it's something revolutionary and meaningful, he said during an interview at the Aspen Ideas Festival this week. To start with, do you already know? Comment below if you're eager to see what GPT-5 will bring. Let's talk here in the comments, guys. I love talking to you. Altman also expressed his dissatisfaction with the errors observed in GPT. For him, these failures are primary and even childish. Many of the things that GPT-4 gets wrong, whether it's in terms of reasoning or when it simply comes out of training, are silly mistakes Something even a six-year-old wouldn't make, Altman said. As for the arrival of GPT-5, the CEO did not set a specific date for the launch. He mentioned that there is still a lot of work to be done and that we are optimistic. The time needed to finalize the LLM language model involves complex issues related to algorithms and data, also considering the scale of GPT. The CEO compared the development of LLMs to that of the first iPhone. Despite the initial bugs, the original iPhone was already useful to people. Now we just have to wait for new updates from OpenAI to find out what advances GPT-5 will bring and when it will be available. Guys, after diving into this chat about GPT-5 and its promises, in my opinion, it's clear that we're about to witness a significant leap in artificial intelligence. Just like the first iPhone, which had its bugs but was useful, GPT-5 promises to surprise us. Anticipation is high and we are all eager to see what this new version will bring. And you, what do you think? Leave it in your comments here below. Let's exchange this idea. If you found the news interesting, like, share, and subscribe. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later. Hey, guys. You've already answered a question for me. Would you trade your cell phone for glasses that project holograms? That's what Meta is banking on right now. Life without a cell phone nowadays is unthinkable, but if we look at history, we realize that this dependence is pretty recent. Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Meta, believes that smartphones' days are numbered. For him, the next big thing will be his holographic glasses with augmented reality. I'm wearing a Ray-Ban Meta myself, which has artificial intelligence, so I'm already part of the change. To get started, you already know. Comment below if you think holographic glasses with augmented reality will replace smartphones in the future. Let's share this great idea in the comments. I love chatting with you guys. Zuckerberg sees these glasses as an evolution of the models developed by Meta in partnership with Ray-Ban. They'll be a bit chunkier and heavier, but they'll still be non-Red Sets glasses. Meta is working to incorporate holographic reality into casual glasses. According to Zuckerberg, a prototype is about to be shown. In the future, we will have three types of glasses. AR, basic, intermediate, and advanced. Each capable of running different levels of augmented reality, just like current cell phone models. Zuckerberg talked about this technological leap by Meta in an interview with Kaleway on YouTube. In the conversation that aired this week, the CEO commented on what he sees on the horizon of this technology and, of course, what Meta plans to launch to make it happen. After the Metaverse, Zuckerberg is betting on glasses that will show holograms. If when reading about holographic glasses with augmented reality you thought of MetaQuest, it's not quite there. These glasses are more like the current Apple Vision Pro and for Zuckerberg are the future of computing. When Kalaway and the Meta CEO talked about replacing cell phones, they were referring to more casual and lightweight versions of glasses. For example, these glasses here, 
in collaboration with Ray-Ban, which looks genuinely like glasses. According to Zuckerberg, what's missing for this kind of accessory to start replacing cell phones in people's everyday life is to incorporate holographic augmented reality into this kind of accessory. And we are working on it, he added. Meta has a prototype of such glasses and is expected to showcase it soon, said the CEO. However, he has already warned that its design will not be as stylish, light, and thin as the model developed in collaboration with Ray-Ban. It will be thicker because it will have much more technology embedded in it, but it will clearly be glasses, not a headset. For the future, close and farther, Meta's CEO envisions these three types of models basic, intermediate, and advanced, similar to the iPhone logic. iPhone SE, traditional iPhone, iPhone Pro, iPhone Pro Max. In short, the difference between these glasses would be how much holographic augmented reality they could run from almost none, only basic features, to a lot of AR covering the entire user's field of vision. Today it may seem surreal, but in a few years it could be the new normal at least for Zuckerberg. Folks, my opinion after all we've talked about? Just imagine holographic glasses with augmented reality. It seems like something out of a science fiction movie, doesn't it? But believe me, we're heading towards that future. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Meta, is placing all his bets on this technology. He sees these glasses as the next step after the metaverse. And do you know what that means? Smartphones, those inseparable little devices we carry in our pockets, could be replaced by these incredible glasses. The idea is very simple. Instead of looking at a small screen, you'll see holograms projected in the real world. Just imagine you're walking down the street and suddenly you see an arrow indicating the right way to go. Or you're cooking and get detailed instructions on the recipe right before your eyes. All this without taking your phone out of your pocket or looking at a screen. It's as if technology merges with our everyday lives, making everything more convenient and intuitive. Of course, we're still in the early stages of this process. Holographic glasses need to evolve, become lighter, more stylish, and more accessible to everyone. But Meta is already working on it. And believe me, in a few years, these glasses may be as common as smartphones are today. But what's your opinion? Comment below. If you find the news interesting, like, share, and subscribe.